Into London Airport comes the man around whom revolves the grave situation in British Guiana. Dr. Chedi Jagan, the deposed Prime Minister of the colony, is here to protest against the government's claim that he and his American-born wife led a plot to make Guiana a communist-controlled state. While reading a prepared statement on the situation, Jagan has Mr. Lyndon Burnham, chairman of the People's Progressive Party, by his side. We were shocked at and still are at a loss to understand the action of the British government in sending military and naval forces to British Guiana, in suspending the constitution and dismissing the de democratically elected ministers of the government. So who are you going to vote for in this election? Well, as for now, I can't say yet. Nearly 200 people died in a violent struggle between the parties before independence. The exploiters and the exploited, the capitalists and the workers. Therefore, you got the vote for the people's national government. Thank you, comrades. I really got the vote now. I have to go left. All the old bitterness between Indian and Negro, between left and right, still simmers. New York City, a place where old cultures can find new beginnings, a place where give me your tired, give me your poor, still seduces the disillusioned. The Indo-Guyanese community here in Southeast Queens have made a home for themselves miles away from Guyana. Little known outside those Caribbean communities, I felt their story was way too important not to tell. So myself, Taylor Jenkins, alongside Daniel Bright, decided to grab our mics, cameras, equipment, and drive all the way from Baltimore to District 28. Hi, I'm Richard David, and I'm so excited to tell you that I'm running for the City Council in District 28 here in Queens. For far too long... Richard, Richard David is a City Council candidate of Indo-Guyanese ancestry. He has been involved in his community for years, serving in government, and as an activist. One of the key pillars in his race is bridging the two sides of the Van Wyck Expressway, separating those of Black and Indian origin, a separation that almost harkens back to some of the worst times in Guyanese history. You and I can win this election. We can bridge the two sides of the Van Wyck and stand united for our seniors, for our children, and for a better quality of life. So, how do I fit in all of this? Well, I have to take you back to Trinidad, where my family's from. So, we have a typical West Indian story. My grandparents came and worked for a wealthy family in Baltimore. Soon they had enough to send for my mother, who had me years later. A couple generations removed in a Caribbean wasteland, I soon began to crave a connection to the culture. One thing led to another, and all roads went in north. First to Brooklyn, and then Queens. So today, Dalen and I are off to New York. We'll skip the nitty gritty packing scenes for now. Our stash and dash styles of packing leave much to be desired. So with the bag here and a bag there, we load up our car and make a beeline for New York. On 133rd and Rockaway, we found Richard David's campaign office. And almost immediately, it was like connecting with Lana's family. 
You asked me a question earlier about what caused the migration. I don't think I answered that. Mm -hmm. um, political strife and independence in Guyana in the 60s mm -hmm. um, led a lot of Indian people to feel like the government that was in, uh, in power at the time didn't represent their interests and mm -hmm. they fled. And it had just hasn't stopped, although the government's changed. Mm -hmm. The influx of Guyanese in New York, um, Indian Guyanese and Afro Guyanese is huge. What's un what's um, what are the weird things that have happened though? Is this is like largely Indo-Caribbean and this part of Southeast Queens, mm -hmm. and the Afro Guyanese populations in Brooklyn. Um, I mean, the, you know, there are exceptions. You have a little bit of uh, diversity as well, mm -hmm. but by and large, it's separated geographically. Mm -hmm. um, we work together. I work very closely with a lot of Afro-Caribbean groups. Mm -hmm. the, the block over is the ex-GDF association. Mm -hmm. It's former Guyanese police, um, uh, law enforcement, uh, and uh, soldiers. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of them live in Brooklyn, but their center is here. Um, oh. And so, but they're, they're, you're right. There isn't a lot of mm -hmm. um, cooperation, collaboration, interaction. Yeah. And I think that's because of the origins of, in Guyana of how people are, um, you know, racially separated. This separation drew me to the Indo-Guyanese community here in Queens, primarily because I wanted to learn more, and Richard was the perfect teacher. He co-founded the ICA, which stands for the Indo-Caribbean Alliance, who among many other things, has tutored over 500 youths during its time. Uh, what are your thoughts on kind of what's going on on the national level and uh, are people kind of feeling it here locally? Hate crimes are at the highest levels Last year, there were several attacks on Guyanese people um, because, you know, we look like Sikh or Muslim or something, and, and those are not excuses, right? Not because you look that way. What's, what Trump has allowed to happen is to make, make people think that something's transformed in the country since he's come into office. And, and it, you know, let's be clear, it didn't start with Trump. It did not, right? We, you know, um, South Asians have been under attack in our neighborhood since 9-11. 3,000 people died that day when four commercial planes were hijacked and crashed into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And an angry driver uh, kept trying to cut him off, eventually stopped his car in front of him, uh, got out and ran up to Inderjeet's car, uh, began punching him in the face. Eventually, Energy uh, lost consciousness. So Trump gets into office and now it's okay to say, um, you know, radical Islamic terrorists, right? It's okay to ban Muslims uh, from, you know, Muslim-majority countries. It's okay to say, well, wait, are you Muslim? We gotta ask you a couple more questions. You go in that line, right? right? These, are, these are really big threats that not just affect people like, you know, like me, people that look like me. The problem is it affects everyone because tomorrow it'll be the next group of people. And, the, and you know, this, this the president's also done a series of things to women. Mm -hmm. He's just, the conversation is just really toxic coming out of Washington. And my message, you know, I'm a local candidate, right? And so what I say to people is that if you're unhappy with the dysfunction that you see in Washington, D.C., right? We're only one state of 50 states, so we don't have the entire say in what happens there. But we have the entire say in what happens in our own neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And if we're frustrated and tired of the dysfunction that's happening in Washington, D.C., then we should be as uh, intolerant of it happening here in our own neighborhood where we have full control. Yeah. We can't blame other people. This is our neighborhood, right. right? And so I'm telling people come out on September 12th and vote. This is Pandit Ganesh, one of the many pundits at the Four in Southeast Queens. I was lucky to have him speak with me at Richard's nonprofit, the Indo-Caribbean Alliance, about Hinduism and its role in the Caribbean community. When they migrated from India, mm -hmm. right, to West Indies, to Guyana, Trinidad, Jamaica, mm -hmm. Suriname, right. uh, once a week at least, they will congregate together. Uh, Mm -hmm. Right, and they will they will read the scriptures together, mm -hmm. and they will perform their worship together because they will work six days a week. Right, and one right. day they will have. So that is where yeah. that that congregational worship came came from. I see. Also, the, the scriptures also talks about congregational worship. Religion in this community 
is much more than just saying a few prayers in a temple. It's a key cornerstone that lies at the foundation of the culture. Uh, the, the Hindu culture, or culture along, along, along the, the, the line itself, is an integral part in the, um, in the Indo-Caribbean community here mm -hmm. in, in, in New York, right. and Richmond in particular. Whether, whether you're, you're of the Hindu faith, or the Christian faith, or the Islam faith, mm -hmm. culture plays a, a, a very, very important role in bringing our community together. Mm -hmm. Culture is a huge source for pride. And if you know a West Indian, you know pride. Religion can also be a huge source for pride as well. And so can food. Next time you're in Richmond Hill, give Sings a try. Mmm, tasty. We're a production company. Mm -hmm. We do not produce flat tires. That's a common misconception. Yeah. Flat Tire Productions is a production company replete with actors, writers, directors, and stage crew. I mean, you name it, they got it. It was co-founded by Frankie Sukhnanen, who unfortunately passed some years ago. Rest in peace, Frankie. During our interview, we spoke about everything from being Indo-Guyanese to everything flat tire. I moved from Brooklyn to New Jersey, and then even then, because New Jersey had a smaller population, right, not the whole state, but like the areas that I lived in, Jersey City, etc., and other West Indian people that I would meet from going to college and deeper within New Jersey, um, even they would say, well, yeah, I go to Monday, or I go here, or I go there, but it's really, but then everything is still based in Queens, right? So uh -huh. I'm in college, I'm in New Brunswick, New Jersey, which is central New Jersey, yeah. and they're for, and everyone's like, well, let's go hang out. Where do you go hang out? We go hang out in Queens, and right. then we come back this way. And, yeah, and yeah, it's like, yeah. like, and we'd make the drive, right? Mm -hmm. Like every weekend, at least one night of the weekend, I'd have my set of friends, and we would bring them back into this world of, of, of community and West Indian culture. The cool thing about Flat Tire is that they take normal, everyday stories and give them a West Indian twist. If you haven't seen them live, you have to watch their videos on YouTube. Even though we're West Indian, and a lot of our past stage shows were very focused on accents and com comedy and how do you say, you know, you, you throw out words out there like nyam and palori and whatever, you're talking about things that people don't normally hear on stage yeah. and they would resonate with that and they want, they come for the humor and they want to laugh and they want to um, experience ha that and we were like, we want to do American plays yeah. with Caribbean actors and show that even though we're here, you don't, not everybody talks with, we're talking right now without an accent mm -hmm. and, but we can throw it down if we want to. Being in this group who celebrates our Indo-Caribbean Americanness. Mm -hmm. um, I think that helps us become stronger in our positions wherever we are. First, you have to think about it as a story of success, right? Mm -hmm. Immigration success. Now, we're doing this in 2017, but the immigration wave probably started in the 60s and 70s, probably peaked in the 80s and 90s, right. based on a lot of different factors, immigration laws in the Caribbean and the US. So that creates this huge boom uh, an immigrant boom, which now you're starting to see the effects, which is in two predominant areas, right? Richmond Hill and the surrounding areas, and Queens Village and the surrounding areas to a lesser extent. extent. This man is the reason why we're even up here to begin with. Robbie Ramki Soon is a good friend who put us in touch with people like Richard David and others here in New York. He is the founder and CEO of a music tech company called Find My Fans which I'm sure you'll hear about in the coming years. Caribbean music is one of our great acts. Oh right? yeah, definitely. And that, the thought of that becoming mainstream really led me on to creating Find My Fans, which is, it's really an app that allows musicians to get access to their fan bases and ultimately make more money. And that can be used beyond the Caribbean music industry. Mm -hmm. It can be used by people in K-pop or, um, uh, singers in Peru, you know, etc. One of the reasons why you support Richard in his run for councilman, uh, what makes him a great candidate? The momentum had been building locally for a very long time. Right. Right, even before he decided to run, even before a seat was available. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these thoughts of you should run one day because um, he was clearly you know, a really good candidate. I got a chance to met, meet him when he was 
founding this Indo-Caribbean Alliance for any, it was just community organization, right? That was essentially what the, the, the ICA is and was, it's, it's, it's organizing community. So long before he made this decision, a lot of people understood who his, what his character was, and it wasn't, it wasn't at all um, some of these negative traits that people might want to run for public office for. In fact, if I recall, I and other people would have mentioned as, as the ICA was growing and his brand was growing, hey, you should actually run for public office. And I remember him telling me, he's like, no, I don't want to do that, right? Yeah. Um, and he was reluctant for, for a time, even though other people saw the potential, because all he needed to do was take that same community humanitarian mindset and now apply it to a different role. Um, as a matter of public record though, and I'm glad that you asked me about Goldman Sachs, let's just get that out of the way so it will never be asked again, hopefully. Adrian Adams ran against Richard David as a strong contender for city council. As the race began picking up steam, things got a little dirty and became heated, especially when Adams was asked about her time with Goldman Sachs. Right. Work for Goldman Sachs. Work for Goldman Sachs. Work for Goldman Sachs. Work Towards the end of the race, a last minute smear campaign was launched against Richard. Another candidate, Hetty Powell, claimed that a similar campaign was raced against her as well. Unfortunately, desperate attempts at influencing the electorate are often used and sometimes succeed. I've said from day one, we launched this campaign on February 14th. I said that we were going to bridge the two sides of the Van Wink and demand more funding for every single ethnicity and group in this district. I said that I would bring every part of this district together. I also said that I would be a fair council member to all of the diverse communities of this people, of this uh, community. And I think what the results show tonight, and this is important, what the results show tonight is that I'm the only candidate in this race that actually brought the two sides of the bandwidth together. I'm the only candidate in this race that brought people of different ethnicities and backgrounds and incomes and issues together. But what we have now is a unique opportunity to demand, really demand, that funding is adequately provided for both sides of the bandwidth. I will not rest until we get fair representation and decent representation, and that your hopes and your dreams, and most importantly, your votes today, don't go in vain. After the election, Richard's organization, the ICA, held its fifth annual gala. There, I met an inspiring community leader named Aminta Kilowatt. I had a long history of being absent in the community, actually. So when I was in high school and the early part of my college years, I was in a pretty really terrible relationship, romantic relationship. And um, I remember being in that, in a space where I didn't think I could ever be or have a voice. And I was being told that by my, my then boyfriend that I would never that I would never be that. But that spark was already lit in me from a young young age. And I decided that I wanted to challenge myself to go to law school. So I did. I studied really hard and I did as good as as, as well as I could on the LSAT. Got into law school, went to law school, and did a lot of just social justice oriented work in law school, but I wasn't finding a space in which I could connect both my Indo-Caribbean Hindu roots with the passion for justice that I have. I was doing all the work kind of in, in two separate arenas, where I was going to temple on Sundays and I was singing and, and being a part of that world, but all of the work that I was doing in terms of activism was being done from my law, from my, my legal background, from my justice oriented side, and not taking it back to the community. And so, 
Sadhana was founded because myself and a bunch of other Hindus, both South Asian and indo Caribbeans, decided there was no space in which we could have a voice in terms of interfaith dialogue. A lot of times when, when you see faiths coming together to speak up for a cause, you see the Abrahamic faiths represented, you see Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists also even, but, but we don't see Hindus for whatever reason. And so we thought, we need to create a space in which we are Hindus and we're speaking out, but not just as Hindus for Hindus, but for the world at large. My friend, Richard David, has changed the mindset from the ground up in our community. Um, there have been others that ran before him and that tried and failed, but he has galvanized this kind of support like I've, ne I've never seen. Um, the campaign that he, that he ran was monumental. Uh, grassroots campaign, totally all about progressive values, about the common man, and, and it bridged the bandwidth, right? So why do we talk about the bandwidth and why is it so important? It's this man-made structure that split two communities apart, and we see that. We, we, talk, we talk about Robert Moses and what he did to New York City to uh, basically segregate that. And, and it's lasted to today. So thinking about where bridges are built and where highways are built and how that divides communities, but that's happened with the that's happened with the band. And Richard has been able to tap into both sides. If you ask me what advice I have for women who are thinking about leadership, I think I have to follow my own advice and be fearless. There's a part of me that's like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this because, you know, do I have the, do I have the thick the thick skin for it, or am I gonna get broken by it, or is it gonna take up my time? Am I gonna have to think about what I'll have to sacrifice personally, mm -hmm. or will I always regret not having done it and taken that step if I don't do it and I don't see where it goes? So that's potentially another big option. And that radar is picking up much on the horizon. When we first came to District 28, we knew we were going to be meeting some inspirational leaders. Guyana has seen its fair share of troubles, from racial strife to unrealized hopes. The immigrant children of that generation find itself pushing forward with great success. And the future is bright for this community. It's safe in the hands of leaders like Richard, who in the eyes of this community will always be a winner. From you wake up this morning, you're a winner. If you wake up this morning, you're feeling nice. From you wake up this morning, you say a little prayers and things. Outside of um, you know what we you know are doing as a group, just, you know being a oh hey man oh yo I left you guys both two Hennessy and cranberries each. Welcome all the crew now coming in the place. I tell you this is where the party is right now.